Hallelujah. Did you come with your Bible this morning? There's a word from the Lord to all of us. Open your Bible to Luke chapter 16. That is our main text for today. Luke chapter 16. I'll be reading from verse 19 to 31. And today I'll do the new King James Version. There was a certain man who was clothed in purple and fine linen. This certain rich man was clothed in purple and fine linen. There are linens and there are fine linen. So they are not the same. They are not the same. Linens are in category. There was a certain rich man, a rich man, who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. He didn't fed sumptuously once in a while. He fed sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. The beggar died. The rich man also died and was buried and been in torments, not torment, torments, plural. In Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. Some of your translations will say a chasm. So that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Verse 27, then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you will send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Verse 29, Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. They have Mr. Ode and Yinka. They have Pastor Richard and Dickin Zibiri. They have Auntie Regina and Uncle Magbe. They have them. They have them. They have them. Let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham. But if one goes to them from the dead where I am, with practical example, with life story, they will repent. Verse 31. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, if they do not hear Bola and Honorable Nimi, if they do not hear Pastor Sars and Dikin Othoro, they will not be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that in the next few minutes that we have to listen to you, let the spirit of your word enter into us. And let that spirit set us on our feet to be doers of your word. And Father, per adventure, there is somebody under the sound of my voice that needs an adjustment. Father, help us to realize and be humble to adjust from this place. We give you glory. Satan, we bind you. This is not a meeting for you. We declare that you are not welcome. We give you glory. We give you honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Interesting story. Powerful story. Popular story. This is Jesus giving a parable. A parable is a short story to bring out principles and certain truths that Jesus normally employs. 
and he did it for his own so that they can understand certain things. So this is Jesus telling this story here or this parable here. This certain rich man is a man of class. They didn't give us his name. A certain rich man. is a man of class. A man of style. A man of luxury. When you heard fed sumptuously every day, that is a man that lives in high level luxury. He wore purple. I want you to know that it's not the kind of purple we are buying these days. No, 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 no. In those days, there is a limit for those who are permitted to wear purple. You must be royal or royalty. You must be a high government official with high net worth. And you must be an accomplished, established, real, truly wealthy man to wear purple. The purple dye is very expensive. So not everybody can afford it. You must be wealthy. You must be royalty. This man was used to luxury. And he also wore linen. When he's not wearing his purple, he's wearing linen. Not just linen. Fine linen. This is a rich man. So somebody said, that must be a rich man. Mm, that's who I'm going to be. Add that. You are afraid. Just add that first. <laughs> you are afraid because of where the man went to. Uh -uh. <laughs> Just add that. Say, I'm going to be rich. Say, I'm going to be super rich. Say it boldly now. And there was a certain man also, but we got his name, Lazarus. He was a beggar, a poor man. Actually, it was translated from pauper. And pauper then means pocus. Very poor. Pocus. That is the Greek word translated there. A very, very poor man who was a beggar. But something else I saw for the first time. He was laid at the gate, which means he was either sick or crippled. So it's a poor man, a pauper, sick and crippled. He was laid at the gate of this rich man. He was so helpless that dogs will come and lick his sauce and he could do nothing. And they both died. Somebody say, and they died. Unfortunately, the Bible didn't tell us whether it was accident or sickness or bomb or kidnappers or anything. The boat died. The boat died. And one, the rich man ended up in a tormenting place or in Hades, in hell. And then the poor man ended up in Abraham's bosom, heaven. That's all the story is about. That's where they ended up. Now, what are we interested in from this story today? Before I tell you what is my main emphasis here this morning, let me bring out some few truths and clear some doubts. Because this scripture was messed up by the old teachers that we knew in Sunday school when we were growing up. So let me say the first thing that I need to clear. The rich man did not go to hell because he was rich. Let me clear it now. The rich man did not go to hell because he was rich. Rich. That's why I told you to confess and some of you were being careful, which is okay. It's good to be careful. He did not go to hell because he was rich. No, not at all. If it was true that he went to hell because he was rich, what is Abraham doing in heaven? Did you get that? Abraham was super rich. The Bible says he was very rich in silver in gold and in livestock, super rich. The Bible talked about the man called Job. He was the greatest man in the East. In the New Testament, we have Joseph of Arimathea, wealthy man. In the New Testament, we heard about the Ethiopian eunuch who went to Jerusalem for worship in his private jet. Oh, yes. They didn't have jet then. It was a horse-drawn cart. You have the horse and the rider in front and then you have a luxury attachment at the back. You sit inside and sip Arabian coffee while the horses are driving. That was the private jet. A believer. A believer. So the rich man did not go to hell because he was rich. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And the poor man did not go to heaven because he was poor. 
No. They went to two different destinations because of the decisions they made while they were alive. Somebody give God praise. So that's number one. Number two, heaven is real. Heaven is very, very real. It is a real place. This morning as we are talking, there are people in heaven enjoying all the peace, all the glory, all the enjoyment. There are people right there. This morning, somebody has transited to heaven and this morning as we are talking, because hell is also real, this morning as we are here right now, somebody is in hell crying with worms that will never die in a fire that can never be quenched. Heaven is real. Hell is real. These are eternal destinations for two different sets of people depending on the choice they make while they are alive on earth. It is not how rich you are or how poor you are that takes you to either of these destinations. It is the decision that you make here on earth. And listen carefully. Every man will die. There will be a few that will still be alive when the trumpet will sound. Those will be raptured before their death, physical death. But every man will physically die someday. Somebody say amen. So we cannot be afraid of death. Another thing I want to bring out from this scripture is that no matter the luxury you enjoy on this side, when you die, everything about this side ends about this side. Then you transit to what is waiting for you on the other side. God have mercy on you. If you are rich here, it is win-win. You will be upgraded to a higher level of riches. But if you are poor here, glory to God. You will enter into the real riches. So heaven is a win-win for both the rich and the poor. Did you get that? Now, the last thing I'll say before I move into my sermon is the time is running too fast. The time is running too fast. Being rich is not an indication that you have a healthy relationship with God. And it does not show that you are doing righteously. It has nothing to do with that. God blesses. But having riches and wealth does not necessarily mean that you are right with God. That is what that story is telling us. The man was super rich, living in luxury, but his relationship with God was out of balance. Now, on the flip side, being poor does not mean you don't have a relationship with God or you are cursed. Because some prophets will tell you because you are poor, you are cursed. And they put you into all kinds of nonsense. Being poor, not having money, not having riches, physical riches, is not because you are cursed or your relationship with God is out of line. No, you can be terribly, seriously clean, righteous, and be poor. The things that make for poverty and riches, there are many. There are many. It's not just about being born again and not being born again. That is why the unbeliever can be rich and the Christian can also be rich. It is not just about being born again. You are born again, you are lazy. You will be poor. But that's not for today. We'll go there another day. You are born again, you are wasteful. You will be poor. You are born again, you are ignorant. Like an ignoramus, you will be poor. And so, riches does not necessarily mean that you are fine with God. And being poor does not necessarily mean that you are out of sync with God. You can be poor and be God's best friend. We saw that in Lazarus' case. Another thing I want to show you here, I saw it for the first time. Engineer Okeke, did you notice that even though this man was poor, was beggarly, and was laid, like I said, either very sick to walk or crippled because they come, they come and drop him there daily. When he was seen after this life, he was buoyant. So that the rich man said, send him. He must have been cleaned up. For the rich man, this rich man that I know, to say, let him dip his finger 
and come and put in my mouth. The man must have been cleaned up. I say that to say that no matter our condition here right now, when we transit, oh, we will be like him. We will be like him. We will be like him. We will be clean, sophisticated, distinguished, real distinguished now. Super distinguished, exuding in glory with glorified body. The kind of body that I can pass like this and appear here. <laughs> Somebody give him praise. So these are some of the fine truths that are embedded in this sermon. But our emphasis is purely concentrated from 27. First, he made a request. He said, can you tell him? I was reading that place. I was laughing. You know, rich men, some of them are very arrogant. See where you did now. You still did command poor man. Make you go bring water. <laughs> he still commanding. Tell him to go and bring water. Can you imagine that? After that request was denied, he went to the next request. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you will send him, <laughs> send him to my father's house. 28. For I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Next. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Next. And the man said, no, Father Abraham. If one goes from here with real life testimony to paint the picture very well, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. No one leaves from here. Do you know why I know this place is true? Jesus himself was with them. He died. After three days, he came back. They still didn't believe. How many books do we have of people who have experiences of heaven and hell who are going around and people will not believe? But does that mean we should stop? No. What we are saying is that the responsibility is not on those who are there already. The responsibility is on us. Therefore, the title of my message this morning is God is counting on you. God is counting on you. And under it, write it, God is counting on me. God is counting on me. In this story, Jesus said, there is a God feast. Nobody can come from heaven to testify from all, to us. Nobody can move from hell to heaven and nobody can move from heaven to hell. When you die, it becomes final. When you die, it becomes final. That is why I laugh, but I pity the people who are praying for the dead. It's a wasted prayer. The moment a man ceases to breathe, no need to pray for the man again. All those living around the man should start take, making sense. I think it's the house of people that says that when you see fire burning, be a beer of your friend. Begin to pour water on your own. <laughs> Did you get that? Did you get that? Did you get that? No need to pray for the dead. So our biggest responsibility is to get to them before they die. But they die suddenly. The rich man died. Lazarus also died. Die. We don't know how they died. Maybe they slept and didn't wake up. Maybe crossing the road, something hit them. We don't know. But people die suddenly. It is those of us that are alive right now, you looking at me, that God is counting on to reach the people before they die. Say, I will reach them before they die. Say it again, I will reach them before they die. It is you and I that are the prophets and the Moses for right now. We are the prophets. We are the Moses. Patrick Otoro, you are the prophet. Sister Bola, you are the Moses. We all seated here. Every man born again, you are the prophet right now. You are the Moses right now. And God is counting on us to take the message quickly to them before they died. Yesterday, the Lord spoke to my ears clearly. I heard it loudly. He said, my son Wilson, this same cry that this guy was crying that day, 
they are still crying right now. There are some of our friends, there are some of our brothers, some of our family members, unfortunately, they are in hell right now and they are crying. They are crying. Osas, go to my brothers. Yinka, go to my sisters. Auntie Reggie, go to my house. They are crying right now. There's a lot of cry there. And God is counting on us to reach these people before they die. For once they die, that's the end. Somebody say, I will not fail God. We are the ones with the responsibility. That's why in Matthew 28, 19, he said, therefore go. He was talking to us. Matthew 10, 7, he said, as you go, proclaim this message. Second Timothy 4, 5, says, do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. Second Corinthians 5, 20, you are my ambassadors. If you are here, I don't have to come. That is what it means. In all the nations of the world, I think, Nigeria has ambassadors. Buhari doesn't need to be there. Nigeria is fully represented. He says, you are here. I'm counting on you. Worship team is counting on you. Ministry of Health is counting on you. Care group system is counting on you. Elders counting on you. Deacons, God is counting on you. Members, God is counting on you. You've done DTS, he's counting on you. You have not done DTS, he's counting on you. He's counting on you and I to take the message speedily to them before they die because nobody knows when they will die. Nobody knows.